Hello guys, my name is Armin. Today we're gonna continue on our series Navis Work Freedom Tutorial Part 2. Today we're gonna take a look at the home tab and settings. Without further ado, let's jump into a Navis Work so we can continue our training. So last episode we left um, off at the view tab and I want to pick it up from here and start. So when you guys look at the grids and level, there is a little um, arrow right here. So if you click on that, it's going to take you to the option editor or the settings for Navis Works Freedom. You can also can access uh, access this through the Navis Works Freedom logo on top. So I can click on it, go to option. There's like a few good items over here that I would like to go over with you guys. The first one is the general. I will leave it as the uh, default, so I'm not changing anything under the general. But for the interface, you have the display unit. So um, if it's basically when you open it up, every single um, uh, Navis model, it's on meters. So you can go and then let's just change it to feet and inches. Um, you have it in degree, decimals, three, and then also you can change the precision over here. Let's just leave it on one eighth. Um, sectioning basically we're gonna go through it uh, it's gonna show that the section on top what color is gonna be the outline of the sectioning um, you can select any color that you like um, selection uh, basically leave it as default uh, measuring same thing i will just leave as a default i'm not changing anything over here that's the thickness of the line like everything um, is really good and working well um, snapping make sure you check all of these boxes um, this is really important so when you kind of do the measuring make sure you snap to the um, to the vertex edges to the lines that's really important and then the viewpoint default this is really important so we have saved title required attributes that means if you save a, a viewpoint and something is hidden if you check this, it's going to keep that view and they're going to keep the object hidden when you click on the viewpoint. If you don't check this box, it basically shows everything uh, in unhide mode, right? And that um, basically apply for changing the color, changing the transparency and everything right here. So with appearances, if you're doing the colors, you're doing the transparency, if you uncheck this one and you uh, create a viewpoint, it basically shows the original. It doesn't show that all the changes that you have done to that object when you create a viewpoint. We can go over those a little bit. I would I would always leave it as default here, but I fix it when I create a viewpoint because it might depends on the, what type of viewpoint you want to create, which one you want to show the hidden area, which one you want to show the whole object with out hidden items so i will leave it over there we can kind of go back and take a look at it the linear speed sometimes it goes really fast and slow you can come over here and adjust those numbers right there um, the next one is a link leave it as a default quick properties this is important it's going to help you out during your coordination meeting so if i kind of move my mouse and stays on anything let me just cancel and show you so if i move it it basically tells me the item name uh you know with a surface the type is topo so if i want to change that and add more info and it comes from the, the model I, I, I basically come here so the first one let's say i want to show i don't know like the file name and the name and the type you can keep adding items to this right so i want to show uh, material let's say so if i hit okay you guys will be able to see like it right now shows the material and shows the surface and it, it depends on the object right so it goes back and forth between those properties and tells you exactly uh what you want to see based on the the or the source file and what properties that so source file has and is going to apply it to all of these settings um i think that's a good one you can you know just go through a little bit more options right here you can kind of see exactly what you want you know for the properties um you can set it the way that you want i think it's a really really helpful tool um displays um leave it i think as default everything is already uh checked 
So I don't want to move like any of this this is a, a few like changes over here like the grid color if you want to change them you know navigation bar if you want to go to the classic orbit you want to change it i would just leave everything the way that it is right now and i don't want to move any of them um, and then so this is going to be the the option and then the properties that you need to turn on uh, to see all the properties that we talk about it basically is going to be in home so you see the quick properties over here we have two tabs so one of them is a quick properties one of them is the property and the quick property is going to go back to all the properties that we defined and when you click on it it basically shows so if i uncheck that when i stay on object is not it doesn't show anything so you got to make sure you have that checked right and it turns on and the actual property is a window and that's a little bit more in detail. So let's say I click on this floor, right? It basically tells me the property name, type, you know, everything. And you can kind of go through all of these tab and find exactly uh, what you need. And all of these property comes from the source file. So Navisworld does not create all of this. So you gotta make sure anything that comes from Revit, CAD, like any other source file that you have, when they contain any properties, they'll be able to do that. Um, so since we are on the home page, let's just continue and finish the, the home tab right here. So we kind of address um, the quick properties, properties under the tool. This is a time liner playback if you wanna turn it on. So when you add the schedule, or any motion or sequencing that you want to show and basically a link everything this is going to be uh, this is a way to kind of turn it on and it's going to be sh uh, right here not a panel and you can kind of show it we haven't created anything that's not going to show um, this is hide uh, basically object and it's going to bring it back right here as you guys can see this is required an item to stay this is hide unselected so this is really important most of the time let's say if i want to select only this wall and i only want to look at this so if i click on this it's only show that wall and it removes everything right everything is hidden only that wall and then if i click everything comes back and this is a really easy tool on hide all because sometimes when you keep hiding you forgot what you um, you know hit you can go over here and hit and hide all and bring everything back right so this is a kind of helpful tool to kind of help you out um, selecting you can use the selection box for a bunch of them or you just kind of use just a single selection tool and then same process if you want to selecting multiple items hold control click you'll be able to select all the items this is basically tell you to select all and then this invert selection is a good tool too so it's, it's kind of act like a hide and select it so if i click on this one it basically selects every single item that i didn't select at that one and you can kind of go back and forth right um, same selection this is going to find all the items that you have and has the same name so um, i want to select that one so if i select the tree it's going to select this one have the same name also, you can go for the same type. So these are basically, it's not the same type, but they modeled that way. Uh, this is a good tool to kind of help. The next one is a selection tree over here and you can access it through the view that we talked about. And this is a really, really important uh, location to see what model uh, models have been appended, what we have, uh, what is the sources, what the location we have, all of these layers that are modeled in the source files all available in the selection tree for us. So selection tree, it's where you can go. It's basically your go-to location. Like on every single project, you go back and forth and just go over here, finding all the items and see what it is. It's gonna give you all the info that you need. Again, it, this is based on the source model how has been modeled and how has been um, kind of defined all of those element and object and navis will kind of show you everything in layer there's a one drop down on top that basically shows you in like a compact we'll make it a little bit like smaller and then if you go to the properties it basically shows you all the properties of all the models right so you can kind of go through all the items if you want like a shape uh, just this is kind of show all the properties and if you go back to the standard is just showing you the model this property is still available uh, but it's going to be under the layers so kind of the properties 
it's going to be kind of the flip side of the um, standard. Um, I think these are really, really good uh, pointers to use during your coordination. And I want to just go over these uh, project tab at the end real quick. So if you do the drop down, we have appearances and we have transform. So you might move one object. If you hit the transform and bring the object back to the original location, it, this is gonna link the object together uh, or you have any links from different sources. And then the appearances, if you change the color and transparency for one object, when you hit um, reset appearances, it takes everything to the original or native color. Right, whatever the native color was, if everything came from Revit in white uh, and you change the color, you'll be able Thank to see. Thank you guys it. for watching today's episode, part two on our tutorial for Navis Work Freedom. If you like the content, please subscribe and leave a like button and stay tuned for part three. Mm -hmm.